So let's talk about this big confab up in Hill, uh, in Harvard, rather, uh, between they, and they do this every year after this has been a long tradition. Every four years, rather, after a presidential campaign, they get the leaders of both campaigns together at Harvard, and they do a whole series on okay, what happened, and um, and what lessons uh, did we learn? Usually, it's civil. And people agree kind of on what worked and what didn't work on both sides. This year was unusual. It was tense. It got ugly, heated, and personal. Uh, you, I know we, you heard some of this uh, last week, but just to, just to refresh here. Here, for example, is, a, um, is an exchange between Jennifer Palmieri, and, who was the communications director for Hillary Clinton, and Kellyanne Conway, Donald Trump's campaign manager, over how ugly it got and how racist and white supremacist it was. I would rather lose than win the way you guys did. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Yes. No, you wouldn't. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. No, you That's wouldn't. very clear yeah. today. No, you wouldn't, respectfully. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, playing the white supremacist card. Excuse me, she said white supremacist. Well, I'm I would sorry. actually like to follow no, up. Sorry, I know it's mentioned a lot on your it. website too. Do you think I ran a campaign where white supremacists had a platform? You're going to look me in the face and tell me that? It did. Kelly and really? did. Oh, and that's how you lost. Red. It did. Oh. Do you think you could have just had you a decent message for the white working oh, class voters? By the way, I think I, 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 I think I, I, they're I, I, right. I think that they did offer. Uh, maybe they might have not been as upfront about it and directly about it, but they absolutely gave. A platform for white supremacy. Absolutely. No, they, sure, they did. They elevated the white supremacists, the white nationalists. Wouldn't even repudiate David Duke's, David Duke's endorsement. Uh, and finally, Kellyanne Conway is saying, maybe, maybe, maybe the problem was not anything we did, but something your candidate didn't do. 200 counties that President Obama won and Donald Trump just won. You think that's because of what you just said or because people aren't ready for a woman president? Really? How about it's Hillary Clinton? She doesn't connect with he people. How about they have nothing in so, common with her? So uh, it got, I, I got to tell you, I wasn't there, but I talked to Jake Tapper when he just got back from that. He moderated the afternoon panel and, and played his entire interview yesterday on State of the Union. Uh, but here, here's my take on what happened at Harvard. First of all, it is absolutely true that the Trump campaign ran the ugliest, the meanest, the most divisive, uh, the most personal, and the most white supremacist, <laughs> anti-American almost campaign we have ever seen. And they ran it with the most unqualified, least experienced, most unfit candidate for president ever in the history of this country. Done, given, no disputing that. It's also true at the same time that the Clinton campaign blew it. They lost an election they never should have lost because they did, as a former caller just told us, they did focus so much on coast to coast. They did focus on women and blacks and Latinos, and they did not, they did not pay enough attention to good working class Americans, particularly in the heartland of the country, and particularly in the Rust Belt states, and that ended up losing the election in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. But you know my real take on this whole conversation is? I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in it. What I'm interested in is moving forward and Democrats taking a look at, okay, like the Republicans did, by the way, in 2012, taking a look at, whoa, how do we lose this thing? And what do we have to do to get back on track? And how can we move forward as a united party right now in 2018 and then take back the White House uh, in 2020? Get those state legislators back. Get some con get maybe get the House back. Pick up some seats in the Congress and in the Senate in 2018 and then move on to the White House in 2020. That's what we got to focus on. And I think there are some very definite things the Democratic Party needs needs. Number one. It needs to recalibrate its message and get back on the message of we are the Democratic Party. We're the party of working class Americans. We don't have to change that message. We are. We just got to make refine the way that the Democratic Party gets that message out there and to talk about all the things that the Democratic Party is always fighting for, whether it's minimum wage or health care or the right of unions to organize or workers rights across the board. 
Republicans always fight those things and oppose those things. Democrats are always the ones fighting for them. We've got to make sure the working class Americans get that. And number So that's number one, I think, the message. Number two is what the focus has got to be. I just sort of you know, indicated that. The focus can't be just we're the party that, that is, is the best party for women and the best party for racial minorities. We're not, no, let's not throw that away and the best party for LGBT Americans, identity politics, so-called. I'm not saying that's not important. That's, that's who the Democratic Party is. But we are also the party of, and let's make sure we focus on and target, again, working class Americans, working American families. And that's who the Democratic Party really is. We sort of lost track of that constituency. We've got to get them back. And finally, I think we have to talk about the process. And that gets to, again, what uh, Thomas, a former caller, just said. The process, there are some things we got to change in the way we go out. And, uh, and, and, and rally people and, and look for votes. The superdelegate, the super, when it comes to presidential politics, the superdelegate thing is a big turnoff. It is, a, it, it is anti-democratic. The fact that poobah, party poobahs can vote any way they want and can ignore what the people of their state do is just wrong, wrong, wrong. Democratic Party, I think, has to either jettison, get rid of the superdelegates, or say, fine, superdelegates get a seat at the convention, but they have to vote the way that their state voted. I think the closed primary is wrong. The fact that you c people can't register on the day that they want to vote, that they have to register as in New York State six months ahead of time, or else they can't participate in the primary, that you have to be a Democrat to vote in the Democratic Party, that we don't welcome independents or welcome Republicans who want to change their party and vote for one of our candidates. Ah, it's wrong. It's undemocratic. So there's some real basic things I think the party has to do. And then finally, I think the party needs new leadership. You know, the party has a generation of older leaders who are great people, but they've been around too damn long. And the party, I think, has to have some New, new generation of leadership, people out there who can really appeal uh, to particularly to younger people uh, to bring them into the party. So that's what, I think that's what we ought to be focusing on. You tell me, 866-55-PRESS, let's move forward. Bernie Sanders people, Hillary Clinton people, Martin O'Malley people, everybody, let's forget this bickering and get on with the program of how do we go from here, how do we rebuild, how do we reorganize, how do we win again? It's the Bill Press Show, Monday, December 5. Well, I don't think that people want a new direction. Our values unify us, and our values are about supporting America's working families. That is one that everyone is in agreement on. Follow us on Twitter at BP Show. This is the Bill Press Show.